no chat, no cabe. I'm going to hit done. Share the screen. Start the broadcast. Greetings, scholars. Um, yeah, I just got a little drawn. I was like, I'm trying to, because I have a student in there. I didn't, I'm hesitant about letting them in the room. Like, if I don't see your name on my roster, then I'm like, okay. You know, I hadn't had any trouble until just now. Um, so I'm gonna just leave that be for now. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, the end of, do we have an exam? Yeah, we have an exam that'll become available next week, all right? So this is the end of week seven. Um, we're gonna be wrapping up, we, we've, we're wrapping up chapter three and section 3.4. Uh, I think last time we worked, we went through as much of the lecture as we could together. So then today we'll take some time to go through as many homework questions. And again, I just kind of go through the homework questions as a courtesy. Um, but the real intent is for class time to be a study session slash a Q and A. All right. So if you have questions about things or you want to, we can work on questions from anything, um, other sections or whatever, or other assignments. I just go through the homework just to kind of fill the dead air. If uh, if anything is not clear, if you have questions, comments, or concerns at any moment in time, feel free to just unmute yourself to get my attention, and we can talk about it. I'll check the attendance and for the the stragglers in another five minutes. So I'm just not wasting so much time trying to get everyone. I try to get the, the stragglers in one fell swoop. So it's section 3.4. Uh, so this is on exponential and logarithmic equations. So this one where x is solved for x, all right? So with this one, this is an exponential equation. With this one, if we get the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side to be an exponential expression of the same base, then we can just equate the exponents, right? So 125 is five to the power of three. So this one will be just x, x equals three. If, I have, if you need me to go back and write it out or show it or anything. Now this one, I think I will write out. And again, anything that you see me writing, you can actually pull a copy of it of the PDF at the end um, from Blackboard. So solve the following equation. So we have this four to the power of absolute value of X equals eight, right? So let me see, can we get these to the same base? Now, four times four is what, 16? So that's not eight. So, but we can get them both to a base of two. So then four is the same as what, two squared? two squared to the power of absolute value of x equals two to the power of three. Inside here, when we say a power raised to another power, can anybody tell me what do we do with those two numbers? A power to a power. Don't you multiply it? This is gonna be two to the power of two times the absolute value of x. Okay, equals two to the power of three, right? So we have two exponential expressions of the same base. So now all we have, now all we can, all we need to do is equate the exponents. Two times the absolute value of X equals three, right? So then let's isolate the absolute value. Absolute value of X equals three by two. So now we have an absolute value equation. This is true if and only if x equals negative three, three over two and positive three over two. Go to forward attendance, this section. Yes. I don't have anybody like it. Okay. 
So, so we get these results, right? Suppose we want to check this before we submit it, right? We want to get a sense, okay, is this correct or not? Something like this we can actually check before we move on. Like if we were on an exam and we, we you know, instead of having to submit the whole exam to get feedback, we want to try to be thorough. So we got a negative three over two and a positive three over two, right? So, so let's see how to check this. Let's go here. This one. So on my calculator, I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to type 4 to the power of parentheses. My absolute value on the left, if I hit math, go to the right to go to number, and number 1 for absolute value. I'm going to say the absolute value of x, and then close parentheses again. So now, if we input these results into the original, the output should be 8, right? So I click variables to so the right, go to y variables, 1 and 1. So x was a negative, I think we said 3 by 2. The output should be eight. And then we can also test the positive three by two. Output should be eight, right? So we can have confidence in those. Results. So then let's, let's try it out here. And we'll go get this right. Let's make it a three by two, comma, three, three by two. Okay. And again, if anything is not clear, you just have to stop me. Let's uh, let's check the attendance again. Let me stop sharing the screen. Still there. Let's see. I just don't know who that is. Let's do that. I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Equation involves a, a single log, solve the equation. So for this one, we, we are basically rewriting the log as an exponential. So to rewrite this log as an, in the equivalent exponential form, we swing the base of the log to the right, and that's going to be an equivalent equation in exponential form. So, so then the 27 is going to become the base of our exponent. So then x is going to equal 27 to the power of negative 4 by 3. So now since we, you know, there's nothing that says we can't use a calculator. I'm going to just use my calculator. 27 to the power of negative 4 by 3. And I'm going to hit math as a fraction. So 1 over 81. 1 over 81. So we rewrite the log as an exponential, but that the base three of the log swings to the right and becomes the base of the exponent. So we have the absolute value of x equals five over three. And then from what we just saw, this should be a negative five over three comma positive five over three. Again, we should check it in the interest of time. Let me see. Well, maybe, maybe I should check it. Three. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. When the, when the three swings, it becomes three to the power of five, right? So three times three is nine times nine is 81. 81 times three is 243. So plus or minus 243, right? I should have checked, but that's okay. We still got our feedback. So we're gonna put plus or minus 243. 243 and 243. Okay. This one, before we submit it this time. Now, suppose we wanna check this, right? Let's see how to check this in the calculator. So here, let's go to y equals. We're going to type log. We're going to go to math. Go to the right for absolute value. Ab log of absolute value of x. Close out the absolute value. Close out the log. Now, if we notice that the question says it's base 3. If we don't address that base, the base that we have in the calculator right now, this is called the common log, that's base 10. 
we need to change the base to base three. So to do that, we use a change of base formula. Basically, we're gonna divide by the log of three. So we change the base from base 10 to base three. Change the base one, all right? So now we put in the function. I'm gonna call in that function like I've been doing with all the others. So now let's, when, we, when X is negative 243, the output should be five. And it's positive 243. Those results. So that's what you would do if you're on an exam. You get a result, you wanna ask yourself, does this answer make sense in the context of the original? So you plug it back into the original and it, it's not always so straightforward to check. Whenever you can check, you want to, like with that one, I can see why that one's not obvious to check, right? Uh, did we get, I think we got there. Let me check attendance one more time. If we want to solve for X to get that out of the exponent, we take the natural log on both sides. So then long story short, X is gonna equal the natural log of 22 divided by the natural log of two. So we can do that here. Natural log of 22 divided by the natural log of two. So if we're running to four decimal places, it, right now we have 4594. That if we look to the right of the four, that three tells us to stay the same. So it's going to be 4594. So we're going to do 4.4594. Let's see the time. You see me writing, you can actually pull a copy of anything that you see me writing. It's gonna be on our black. My YouTube channel, All right? I have everything there. Who's there? Somebody's there? Don't let somebody be there. How dare somebody be there? She acts like nobody else is supposed to exist. And like if they come within her field, she's like so grumpy all the time. It's so funny. <laughs> like Malachi. And she's she's so paradoxical because she's quick to bark at like these big scary dogs and like these strangers. She'd be acting like she's the baddest thing in the world. But let somebody walk around with a broom or or a vacuum cleaner or a box or an umbrella. And she's like, oh my God, run! It's the <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's so funny. I'm like, and then she'd be like, you know, using the bathroom, still be trying to hard. I'm like, you can't be using the bathroom and hard at the same time. You can't do it. <laughs> like, you're not threatening in that position. That's a non threatening position. So just cut it out. <laughs> it's so funny to me. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this. <laughs> we have uh, this, let's get a copy. So we've got three times two. <laughs> to the power of 3x minus 1 plus 4 equals 14, all right? To solve this, we're going to be, we're going to move terms away from our x, right? So we're essentially going to be working away from the outside to the inside, all right? So first thing we want to move is that 4, all right? And let's do this really quickly. Color. Not a good favorite color. Yeah, I meant to say this earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it now. Um, I challenged my earlier students. Let me see, if you can take like one of the concepts that we've been discussing and apply it and bring it to life and like make a YouTube short, um, you make the short, you present it. We need to go back and forth a little bit like this so I can like, you know, make sure the sound and things of that nature. Um, and present it and then, you know, I will be open to offer some, some amount of extra credit for that. I don't know how much, I don't know if it'll be substantial or not. I don't know how much. I have a sense, but I don't wanna say anything right now. I just wanna see if you're able to take this and bring it to life. So some examples. 
you know, I'm a gamer, right? So then it's like, okay, like for instance, I I, I play this game, um, uh, Mobile Legends, uh, Bang Bang Mobile Legends, right? It's basically a five on five battle royale uh, capture the flag style game, um, where basically you have to like, it's a game of cooperation to, you know, dominate your opponents. And it's about strategy and timing and all this other stuff. Um, but to me, that game is a lot like chess. So I keep having this notion to, well, let's go and look up some of the strategies that were done in chess. Can we take those strategies and apply them to this video, right? Because it's clearly a chessboard, right? So then like what's some of the research that's been done in chess? Can we take that those same techniques and apply them to this game, right? And then like, so you can take some of the things that already exist and find ways to apply them. So then can we, you know, how, how can we take what we've been talking about and apply it to something that we love, right? Um, suppose you're a writer, you know, you're, and so can you find some way to take what we've been discussing and bring it through the bring it to life through the art of literature? Or if you're a, a drawer, maybe you can make a comic book or write a little short story. Uh, and it, it doesn't necessarily, you know, I just want to see how how what you're able to create. So if you were to make something, to make it a YouTube short, no, no longer than a minute, uh, then we can like have a day. I'm, I was thinking like right after spring break, if we had the time. Uh, where we showcase people's creations and we can have like a, a like a um, first, second, and third place, something like that, where we're showcasing in class where people create it. And like no more than like three in a group, right? So you can have at most three people in the group to receive credit. It was just a it was just a thought, just something that I thought would be interesting, just to see what you guys create. You know, so that was the challenge that I gave to my students earlier. So I'm just offering you making the same offer to you all. Um, so if, as long as you hear this or you're aware of it or whatever, uh, you can take advantage of it. Okay, so now, whenever we, we whenever we make a change on the left-hand side of the equal sign, we also need to do the same thing on the right. We wanna move terms away from our X, right? So let's start with this four. In order to move this four, what's, what's to undo this plus four, what's the inverse of addition? We subtract four on both sides, right? So minus four and minus four. Okay. So a number plus is opposite zero. So then on the left, copy and paste. This is what remains. Fourteen minus four. Ten. So and now if we're still moving terms away from the x, working away from the outside to the end. We have three times our term. So if we're multiplying by three to undo that, the inverse operation is division. So we want to divide both sides by three, right? If we're multiplying by three and we want to undo multiplication, we divide. So a number divided by itself is one, right? So then, copy, paste. On the left, this is what persists. On the right, I'm just gonna leave it as 10 over three. So now, let's see. So now to get the variable out of the ex exponent, the, the to undo an exponential operation, the opposite of exponential or the inverse of exponential are logs, right? So we take the natural log on both sides. Take the natural log on both sides. So we're gonna say the natural log of this thing, and we're gonna take the natural log of this. Now on the right, when we take, I mean, on the left, when we take that natural log, that, uh, that allows us to bring this out of the exponent and bring it down in front. So then at this stage, we have three X minus one times natural log of two. On the left, okay. And then on the right, we just, we're gonna leave it as the natural log of 10 over three. Uh, let me just, you want to be careful about crunching numbers early. If you crunch numbers early, if you if you round early, that's going to throw off your final answer. You can crunch numbers early, but you got to write out the long decimals. So 
I, instead of writing out the long decimals, I just leave it like this in exact form until the very end, right? So now we have some number times a binomial, right? So if we're still moving things away from our, our variable, we want to move this number, whatever this number is, we want to move it to the other side. We don't have to know what that number is to be able to use it, right? So to move this number to the other side, since we're multiplying by the natural log of two, if we want to do undo multiplication, we divide. Log of two. Okay. So a number divided by itself is one. Okay. So now at this stage, we have And on the right, we still have our natural log of 10 over three over the natural log of two, right? Wrong. I think the hardest part is over. Signs, we get three X equals this thing. That's when I say plus one. So multiplying by three, we can divide both sides by three. Dividing by three is the same as multiplying by a third. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to multiply both sides by one over three, right? Multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by three. It's one third. A number divided by itself is one. Again, that's the exact answer above. And then at that point, I'm going to put this in my calculator to find the final result. Okay. Uh, let's see if we're here. So now, third. Log of ten over three. The natural log of two. Now, using your parentheses here, uh, it takes practice to be able to do it correctly. If you don't do it correctly, it'll throw things off and it won't work. So that that takes practice to be able to do that properly. Okay. Let's see. It says. Final answer, then round to three decimal places as needed, right? So if we're doing three decimal places, we're looking at the 912. So with that two, we look to the right of the two, there's a three. That three tells us to stay the same, right? So then this will be approximately. Nine one two. more 0 0.912. Check on you guys in Zoom really quickly. I don't know. He's just not on my roster. Like one or two more in. We're almost done. We got less than 10 minutes remaining. Uh, okay, yeah, let's do this one. I, I was about to skip it, but it looks like it has a little bit more comp complexity to it. Let's see. As, it, as the last one.
Okay, so let's start by getting the copy. We have this times four to the power of x minus two equals five to the power of x plus two, right? Fortunately, because there's no plus on the left-hand side, we can do the following. No plus or minus, you know, on the, on the this, um, we can take the natural log of this entire thing and, and do the same thing on the right-hand side. I actually kind of like the whole left and right thing. I felt like it just made it more neat. When we apply the natural log like you see and blue, I think we have what a product rule. The log of the product is the same as the sum of the log. If that multiplication were addition or subtraction, there is no addition rule, there's no subtraction rule, right? So we could not have done this. If this was two plus four to the power of X minus two, we would not be able to do this technique. But because we do have a product rule, that's why we're able to do this. So on the, on the left-hand side, if we expand this, we're going to have the natural log of two plus, it's going to be the natural log of that second term. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and write it. Natural log of four to the power of x minus two. Oops. Now, when we take the log of a power, the log of a power is going to be the same as the power times the log. Uh, on the right hand side, we're going to get x plus two, uh, right? And we can do the same thing with this guy. This is what I was, I was going to go straight to this, but I was like, well, let me just write it out. But we can apply the same technique with that second term on the left. So now on the left, if we expand it all the way out, we have the natural log of two plus x minus two times the natural log of four equals x plus two times the natural log of five, right? Now we're, we're ready to get the party started, right? So notice that this is some number distributed into a binomial, so we can distribute that number. This is some number times a binomial, so we can distribute this number. So let's expand it out even further. Now if we expand it further, on the left, we get the natural log of two plus x times the natural log of four minus two times the natural log of four equals x times the natural log of five plus two times the natural log of five. So now with this, any term that has x, we're going to move it to the left. Any term that does not have x, we're going to move it to the right. Now that we have it in this fully expanded form. We're going to keep our x's on the left. This x natural log x times the natural log of four can stay. The x natural log of five, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So we're going to have minus x natural log of five. I don't have an x in them, I'm moving them to the right. So that natural log of two, if I subtract it, <clears throat> we're going to have a negative natural log of two here. We're going to add that two log four. So plus two times the natural log of four. And that two natural log of five just persists. Two natural log of five. Okay. Oops. 
left, can anybody tell me what's the term that's called reverse distributing, right? If we wanna basically reverse distribute those two X's on the left, it's called factoring, right? We can factor out an X from both of those terms and that's gonna leave us with the natural log of four minus the natural log of five equals, uh, this is fine, negative natural log of two plus two natural log of four plus two times the natural log of five. And then we're almost there. This is what we can do. So then this is gonna be equal to, so then we're gonna have X equals negative natural log of two plus two, two natural, come on, I can't write that. Natural log of four plus two natural log, natural log of five divided by the natural log of four minus the natural log of five, right? That's the exact result. Uh, at this stage, I think it said, I will use a calculator. Do not round this on the final answer about the three decimal places is needed, okay? So then we get that X is approximately, and then that part we put in the calculator. Wait. Again, we gotta use your parentheses properly. So we're gonna say negative natural log of two plus two times the natural log of four plus, two times the natural log of five. That closes off the log, this closes off the numerator. I'm gonna say divided by, I'm gonna open another set of parentheses for the denominator, natural log of four minus the natural log of five, okay? Close off that log and close off the denominator. It's a, I think it's a three decimal places. It's needed. So now we got a result of negative 23 point. Now, if we go seven for three, when we look to the right of three, there's a nine. That nine tells us to round up because it's, it's greater than or equal to five. So we're gonna put 744. Just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and submit it on, on Pearson. And I think we can call it a day for this one if we get it correct. Okay. Right here. We got a negative 23. Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, let's just go with it. We're going to see. So point 0.744. Let's see. Here, let me go ahead and share a copy of this stuff with you guys. Is that all you're doing for today? I thought I was just going to do some closing remarks and then let you guys go. Um, the closing remarks basically, you know, we got exam two next week. Um, we just kind of keep working. And, you know, next week we'll just, I'll just be available for questions. And you, you can ask questions on anything for any exam, any homework assignment during class. And we can talk about it, right? You know, unlimited attempts, only 10% late penalty. Otherwise, gentlemen, if there are any other burning questions, we're actually going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, guys, enjoy your weekend. Peace.